welcome to Source to Sword, the show where I, Bruce Cannon, sort a game, film, or comic and compare it to its source material. Today, I'll be covering Super Smash Bros for the Nintendo 3DS and Wii U. If you haven't played Super Smash Bros, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Even my grandma has played Smash Bros. That's not a joke, she's played the original in Brawl. She means normal Pikachu. Super Smash Bros is a series of fighting games on Nintendo consoles. Instead of being a standard fighting game, it takes characters, items and locations from classic Nintendo games and Falcon punches them into one fighter. The first Smash Bros game was a Nintendo 64 exclusive starring 8 iconic Nintendo starter characters and 4 equally iconic unlockable characters. It may not seem like much by today's standards, but it was amazing seeing all these characters sucked into one cartridge as back in the day we had Link and Samus in Super Mario RPG, but that was basically it for crossovers. The starter characters are all obvious. You have Mario, Yoshi, Donkey Kong, Kirby, Link, Fox, Samus, and Pikachu. You later unlock Luigi and the slightly obscure Nintendo mascots, Ness, Captain Falcon, and Jigglypuff. The roster may not be large enough to fill Peach's castle, but back when I first played this game on N64, I didn't need any more. For its time, there was nothing like it. Each character felt exactly like they did in their original game, except not Captain Falcon, yet all fought so well in this fighting game. Even the stages you played on were based around Nintendo games. While Sector Z may be the only one that looked exactly like its original, all stages fit within the theme and resembled the location they attempted to be. Even though there may not be many characters to choose from, there were still characters I loved playing as. We had four different colour Yoshis, Wario coloured Mario, four coloured Kirby's and Wizard Pikachu. Pikachu could even do an x-ray move before Mortal Kombat. For many years I used to play this daily, playing in one player mode as different characters with different stock and different difficulties, but then everything changed. Along came another console and a new Smash later. All the characters we knew and loved from the first Smash were here, but this time they'd brought along their friends. New characters from the same series arrived, like Peach, Bowser, and Zelda. There were entirely new series being represented, like the Ice Climbers from Ice Climber, Marth and Roy from Fire Emblem, and even a character inspired by the Game & Watch consoles. Of course, new stages were in the game too. Yoshi not only had Yoshi's story, but also Yoshi's Island. You actually fought on Peach's castle, a stage of recreating Ice Climber, and even one with giant Pokemon flying around. While all these new characters and stages were great additions to the series, something just felt different. There's no border platforms, the characters slip away like a snake, allowing people to just run from battles last minute, and characters feel generally the same. The whole thing was just too friendly to newer players, which is a theme that reoccurred in Brawl. Brawl brought in not only Nintendo characters, but also Solid Snake and Sonic. While this had fun new characters and levels, Siri seemed to forget the characters from other games, with Snake not doing any stealth at all, Olimar having unlimited Pikmin, Donkey and Diddy Kong making realistic animal sounds, and Rob actually working. When does that ever happen? It even introduced a story mode. However, the gameplay itself just didn't work as Smash Bros doesn't work as a platformer. Although, one thing that was undeniably better with Brawl is the online mode. While it may have lagged quite often, it was still good to be able to beat up your friends no matter where they were in the world. Unfortunately, the Wii's online servers have closed. RIP. With the announcement of the Wii U, everyone was excited to see their favourite Nintendo characters uppercutting each other in high definition. However, Nintendo took a weird turn and announced that Smash Bros 4 would come to the 3DS first and then the Wii U. The roster was well put together, with my only complaint being the non-returning character, Ice Climbers. I enjoy the 3DS version of Smash Bros 4, but the controls just don't work. To input good attacks, you end up shaking your screen too much and handhelds just never have good controllers. The newcomers are great, including the Blue Bomber, Mega Man, 
Mega Man has perfect moves and represents the Mega Man series perfectly. Mega Man is not an easy pick up and play character, but I think that adds to his charm. He uses his ordinary blaster as his main move, which isn't a great attack for a fighter, but he gains the power of the Robot Masters from the original Mega Man games, including the Metal Blade you get from beating Metal Man in Mega Man 2. If you're stupid, you can replace this with the Hyper Bomb from Mega Man 1. You can also use the Ice Slasher and Super Arm from Mega Man 1. Crash Bomber, Air Shooter and Leaf Shield from the amazing Mega Man 2. The Shadow Blade, Spark Shock, Hard Knuckle and Top Spin from Mega Man 3. Skull Barrier from Mega Man 4. Plant Barrier and Flame Boss from Mega Man 6. And even Danger Wrap and Slash Claw from Mega Man 7. It's clear the developers took the most care of Mega Man his slide even resembling the slide from Mega Man 3 and his up B being either Mega Man 3's Rush Coil or beat from Mega Man 5, 6 and the 4th GBA game. It even includes the Tornado Hold and Flame Sword from the often forgotten Mega Man 8. His final smash even shows off the other Mega Man from Legends, Star Force, X and Battle Network. That's a lot of Karen references for just one character. Other NES reps appear like Dark Hunt Dog, Little Mac and Pac-Man. It's a shame Simon Belmont didn't whip into this game too. It even introduces brilliant stages like Balloon Fight, Find Me, Garden of Hope, Living Room, Mario Galaxy, Mushroom Kingdom U, Mute City, Pac-Land, Pilot Wings, Rainbow Road, Skyloft, Spirit Train, Tomodachi Life, Wily Castle, Windy Hill, Wii Fit Studio and my personal favourite stage. Gamer. If only they had all of these stages in the Wii U version, then the game would be perfect. You could even use your mate and customise its outfits. Overall, the main differences between the games are only graphics and rosters. Out of all the sequels, the only game that is most like and better than the original Smash game would have to be Smash Bros for Wii U. As many characters have traits not seen in other characters, rather than trying to be friendly to new players. For the game that is most faithful to the character's original games, it would have to be 3DS and Wii U again. If you disagree, did you not hear my lecture on Mega Man? I can't wait to get my hands on Smash Bros Wii U and that beautiful Yoshi amiibo. Super Smash Bros for Nintendo 3DS and Wii U is definitely faithful to its source material of the original Smash Bros and the games the characters originated from.